Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to clean up some of your camera functionality code. So essentially what I have here uh, is just in a test project I've been working on for messing around with things in BoxGD and whatnot. Um, I have a very simple camera update function that essentially snaps to a target, which uh, I'll demonstrate here. It, it, all it does is set the X and Y to a static target, and anytime that target changes, it's uh, essentially locked on. There's no linear interpolation, nothing fancy, um, but in my case, for this project I have here, um, it just locks on to the center of the room that the player is in. So you'll notice here, I have a little circle body player. Uh, he can move around and stuff, and uh, the camera doesn't really follow him. It just locks on the room. Um, and if I enter the right here, you'll notice the player is now on the left side because he entered the room. There's now some locks here at the bottom that I can control uh, for the time being for debug stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it just because the target changes anytime he enters the room, it snaps right to it immediately. You don't see any linear interpolation or anything special. So I'm going to change that. Um, first, thing you're going to want to do is uh, get your utility class. I, I tend to put it in the utilities because it's just a, a function that the camera will use. It's not really changing what a camera does. Um, and I call it camera styles. So in here, we're going to take this camera update code and kind of throw it in here to create different types of camera functionality. So let's say you want to switch between uh, camera locking to a position or the camera interpolating to a position or um, let's say the player is getting closer to an enemy and once the player is close enough, uh, the camera will change the way it operates. And by doing that, you'll be able to have a lot more functionality in your camera update code instead of populating this with a bunch of different styles of camera functionality. You can just call the methods that are in here and achieve the same thing. Um, so first things first, uh, we're going to want to move this code out of that camera update and throw it into a public static method in here. Uh, and we'll just call that lock on target. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it take a camera of the uh, GDX type. And then I also want to be able to track a certain target uh, that first being our room, the center of the room, like we saw before. And we can just paste that code right in here. Um, and all I do is get a vector three position, which uh, is the camera position type. And I set the X and Y to the given target. And I modify the camera's position to the new position I have. And then I update the camera accordingly. And so now that I have this method in here, all I have to do in my camera update function of my game state class that I'm working with is call camera styles dot lock on target, pass it our camera, and then I can just specify that vector to target that I have loading up here. Um, and the nice thing about that is I'm able to on demand tell what target I want at any time. I don't have to have hard-coded target uh, solutions anymore. I'm able to just pass that target value to it. Now, you'll notice once I call this, uh, I just get the same functionality. And it makes your game state class look a lot cleaner when you just have that single line of code there. So we'll go back real quick. Um, I do have something called camera val, uh, which I use to evaluate which type of camera targeting I currently want for the sake of these demonstrations. Um, and let's say I want to follow the player. So first thing first, I want to uh, have the first mode set to target the center of the room still, else uh, camera styles dot lock on target camera and then that can just be player dot get position and of course because we're retrieving information but from the box 2d world we want to scale it or multiply it by 
our pixels per meter ratio. Okay, and we can get rid of that line real quick. And so I have it set up, so when I press A, camera value will increase. Um, and then once it hits like a certain threshold, it'll reset back to zero. So first, it'll track the center of the room. And remember, it's just a very simple function of a static x and y. So it's tracking the center of the room. I press A, and now we get a very uh, different kind of target, uh, our player. So easy enough. You can change that on the fly as you see how easy it is to just throw in that extra uh, parameter for us. But let's try something else real quick just to demonstrate how nice it is to have this extra class just filled with different kind of camera functionality uh, methods. So let's add that interpolation uh, type of camera function. So we'll do lerp to target. We'll call that. Uh, camera vector to target and then we can essentially just take the same code and for those of you who uh, hadn't seen my interpolation video uh, the interpolation function is pretty simple uh, it's just a plus b minus a times our lerp factor um, and that's a, a, like a smoothing factor, how fast it'll snap to that B. So B is our target position that we want our camera to focus on. A is just the current camera position. And this essentially returns the distance uh, multiplied by a small factor. So as the farther away it is, the larger those values are. And as it gets closer, it'll kind of decelerate towards uh, the B position. Okay, and so just kind of following this real quick, uh, we have our camera dot position dot x plus target dot x minus camera dot position dot x and then multiply it. I tend to use um, 0.1 for my interpolation. And it's just a nice level of smoothness. Okay, then we can just do that, change that to the y. Pretty much the same thing for both. Okay, and now we have a interpolating function that we can use anytime we want. Uh, let's go back here real quick. Um, and why don't we change this to lerp to target? And you'll notice we now have some very different functionality when we load into our rooms. So you already saw from the beginning there how it kind of slid into the center of our room. Now, if we go to this next room, you'll notice we have that nice Zelda feel entering a room or like Binding of Isaac type of feel. And uh, it, it's just crazy how much these small little camera details can really add to the feel of your game. Um, just adds that much more enjoyable experience. Um, so... With that, uh, that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, in future videos, I'm going to cover some more camera styles, such as uh, there's one that essentially is, like I described earlier in this video, uh, where if the player is approaching a, an enemy or something and you want the camera to kind of be aware that the player is approaching an enemy, and if the player is within a specific distance and close enough, the camera will actually begin to average between the player and the enemy. And that's kind of a nice effect. It adds those focal points or kind of key points that allow the camera to feel more dynamic. And uh, it, it's just a nice addition to have in the game and be able to work with an easier transition to different functions without having to hard code all that stuff in one camera update function. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I can't wait to cover more of these. They're a lot, a lot of fun to work with. So thank you again. Comment, like, subscribe, uh, as usual, and I hope to see you for the next one.